This is a Ben Frank Connection presentation. Let's get on with the show. What's going on, everybody? We are here. The ABJ podcast. Uh, ABJ presents Tornado Tag, episode 124, the history of the American dream, baby. Dusty Rhodes. That's one. Yeah, a lot I, of I, set, I, I set the over under for bad Dusty impressions at six and a half for this episode. Oh, well, that one doesn't count then because it was amazing. They're all bad. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> but yes, we are covering the history with that. We are officially the last Sunday of the month. Tomorrow's April Fools. I still think Philly is is hosting WrestleMania, right? That's not that wasn't a joke. If if they're really committing to the bit, if they're not, because the stage is getting set up right now, the big canopy over the the ringside is is set up right now. Yeah, so it's going to be very exciting, very very pumped that we are going to be heading to WrestleMania in Philly. I I am well, we're not actually going to WrestleMania. We will be at the festivities amongst Philadelphia. Um, I'm sure we'll get. I, I will be at Labor of Love on Wednesday and Thursday, uh, at the Attic Brewing Company uh, facilities in Germantown. Uh, just kind of hanging out, supporting our boys over at the Opinion City Podcast. We'll be doing the pre-show and post-show. Um, I'm going to try to go around and get some five questions with ABJ. Maybe get my bucket list five questions right then and there. That show, fingers crossed. There you Looking go. at you, Ultramanus. You're going to be there. Just give me three minutes. I'll, I'll knock them out quick. I don't need anything special. You know what I mean? Um, but also, I will be on Saturday, night one of WrestleMania, over at... Uh, the blog party on South Street, 628 South Street. It'll be from 11 a.m. to 6 p.m. at Suplex Vintage Wrestling. ABJ will be on commentary for Suplex Mania. That card is absolutely stacked. A lot of people we know, BP, performing yeah. on this one are going to be wrestling on this one. Uh, the show's going to open with the clutch uh, catch point uh, student battle royal, which will open the show. No, a few of those people. Yeah, we know a lot. We know we know a bunch of them. The really good school. That is uh that, that's that's uh Gulak School, Wheeler Yuta, Yuta, and yeah. um Tracy Hot Sauce Williams, I believe, are the yep. three people involved with that school. Uh, I know and Phil Stamper's been doing a lot of seminars there. Yes, yeah, very much so. And then the opening of the match, op opening match will be Nick Wayne versus Marcus Mathers. Banger, AEW's yeah. own Nick uh, Nick Wayne. Uh Zeta Steel will be taking on uh, Jada Stone. The post game will take on the rep. Uh Deshaun Pratt will take on Matt Quay. Aaron Ash will take on Mr. Grimm. Rocket, uh, or not, no longer Rocket. Sean Smith will be yes. taking on Teriyaki. But Rocket, I think Sean added, Smith, I believe is. Yeah, I, I think just for now he's going with Sean Smith. He's thinking he's filling that out. I think they added that a triple threat, but I forget who the third person is. Um, but yeah, that one's gonna be a banger. Jordan Oliver versus Griffin McCoy, and then Joey Janela versus Broski Jimmy Lloyd. So that's gonna be a really, really fun show. Uh, BP, where are you gonna be at that weekend? I have no idea yet. I, I'm going. I'm a civilian that weekend. I'm not booked anywhere. I'm not doing anything other than enjoying some wrestling. Um, but I probably should have planned it out a little better. Because it's it's better going by the seat of your I, pants. Well, it, it is until things get sold out. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I think I will be. I'm not 100%. I've, I, I think the strongest inclination I have anything, I'm 99% sure I will be at that show at Suplex, uh, that, that block party at Suplex. You know what's weird? I haven't enjoyed a Pilgaru beer with you they will in be a there. long time. And we're going to do it in Philly because Tony Deffen will be bringing Pilgaru brews uh, to Suplex Mania. Yeah. And then I, I have a somewhat strong inkling that I might check out that Ring of Honor show. Okay. The uh, Super Card of Honor, whatever the, the their big thing is. Um, yeah, I yeah, believe yeah. that's Friday night. Mm -hmm. um, and then also, if you guys want to grab your ABJ podcast merch, uh, it will be available. I will give it to uh, 
here's my here's the bit I'm gonna do. Every thirteenth of the month, the thirteenth, I like it's a cool number. The thirteenth caller. Yeah, the thirteenth of the every month, I will rotate the the new logos for the month. So I, I said logos like I'm from Philly. Did you hear that logo? We started. Yeah. Yo, logo. we're gonna have a new logo at the thirteenth of every month. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that doesn't count as a dusty <laughs> impression. No, it does not. Um, but we, so I will, I will flip. So if you have, you have till the thirteenth to get your your Philly merch, uh, and then after that we will flip it around and get some new ones out there. Uh, that might be something it, to change because I think yeah, after that you yeah. take the clothes, you put them in the water. Yes, and then you you throw them out. You throw them in the trash. <laughs> I put them in the drawer. For, if I'm down there for five days, I might start talking like that again. That's my big fear. That would be amazing. That, that's my big fear. <laughs> Um, former content that's out right now. Also, you can check out the uh, Ben Frank uh, Ben Franklin Connection. Uh, they have some really cool exclusive merchandise. So if you want to grab that ABJ Club, the Witchcraft by Lily, King Ralph, or the Russell Club stuff, that's all available and much, much more over there to support the Ben Frank Connection. Uh, episode just dropped with Evil Dead Rise with our buddies Charles Moran. I had an absolute blast with that one. Charles uh, didn't know the format of the show and came on not watching the movie, so that was a lot of fun. Oh, there you go. <laughs> He still killed it though. And then uh, Dante, Elizabeth, James, Kate joined the podcast. Our most viewed episode so far right uh, comes to like actual people commenting, most comments, most engagements, most likes, and the most people watching at one time. At one point in time, between YouTube, Twitch, Facebook, we were up to 186 people watching that episode. I'm very, very proud of that. It showcased my ability to do interviews outside of the world of professional wrestling. So very, very proud of that. And uh, the only thing I can announce right now on Thursday when I'll be in Philadelphia, Philadelphia, I don't know why I said it like that, episode with Mark Sorrells from the Kryptonaut podcast will drop at midnight. So you guys will be able to check that one out on Thursday. Um, five questions with ABJ while we are at the Worldwide Dojo. We're wrapping that one up here with Brew Valen. And then also the next, uh, Brew Valen's out now, but on Monday we'll be dropping with Al De Niro. Uh, on Wednesday we'll be dropping with Danny Moe. And that's when I was at PPW at the Slatington Expo Center. What was it? Uh, Born to Run. We were at that show. Got to fix that graphic. It says Danio Mo. I fucking broke that. I fucked it up again. Oh, that's the old one. I did fix it. Yeah. So it is. It is corrected. I sorry, Danio Mo. Uh, you're a sweetheart. Let me. I, I will. I will do that justice. Let me put it up. Because I. I'm, a, I, I'm a little scared. Danny's got a tough draw at the next PPW show. Yeah. Danny might not might come out a little worse for wear on yeah, a there's 20th. Danny Mo. Yeah. And then on Friday, Dio Bando. Baby. You always have to throw the baby after that. Dio Bando baby. No, 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 no. Baby. You have to little you have to put the uh on the baby. Oh, okay. I'll try. I'll try my best. Um, but that's pretty much it. BP, you had a real busy week. What's going on with you? You you hosted some trivia. You did a lot going on. I uh I I'm I'm surprised I still have a voice. There were times throughout the weekend where I thought I would, and I'm like, how how am I gonna do this? <laughs> so uh, I I've had a busy couple of days here. Thursday night, great time at Pilgaru Brewing, WrestleMania trivia, one question for all 39 WrestleManias. What, in what the was your hardest question? Uh I think for me, I think the hardest question may have been um for wrestlemania 31 what two former rivals teamed up to defeat the bella twins because I, I didn't want to make them I, it, look if i'm trying to just stump everybody that's not fun yeah yeah so you gotta make yeah that some that everybody can get like qu first question who was hulk hogan's partner at wrestlemania one pretty much everybody can get that yeah uh but yeah so the the partners uh the the team that, that defeated the bella twins at wrestlemania Le Ed, Ed, was it lita and tris no, it was um, it was Paige and AJ Lee. Oh, really? I did not know yeah. that one. And then the tiebreaker questions were a little harder, like the oh, so it went to a tiebreaker. Yeah, the the per and this is something if you know it, you know it. But it's like one of those little. It's actual trivia. Like it's like oh, by the way, did you know this? Like rhythm and blues. The Honky Tonk Man and Greg Valentine had a concert at WrestleMania six. Who and they didn't announce who it was because he wasn't really that famous outside of a certain area at this point, but. Who drove the pink Cadillac they came to the ring to? Little Richard. Diamond Dallas Page. Oh. And you know what? I didn't know that. And it wasn't like, hey, we we're going to bring in DDP. It's just that DDP owned a pink Cadillac at that time. They like, hey, can you bring it and you can be on WrestleMania? So he he literally drove the pink Cadillac. I think he was living in Florida at the time, wherever he was living from at the time living at at the time. He drove it from there to Toronto just to be in WrestleMania six. Who uh, who won? Anyone we know? 
Uh, no, no, it was a good uh, turnout. Decent. Yeah, it was a pretty, yeah. it was a decent turnout. Fun time. Um, fun time had by all. And then from there, Sanctuary, uh, the Sanctuary on uh, Friday night, the annual Stampede. Um, a lot of fun there. I got to do commentary with the great J.S. Hawthorne, uh, who I have that magic touch. Uh, I, I, there was once, once upon a time I interviewed a guy and then th- three or four days later, he beat Chris Jericho on AW Dynamite. He got signed. Th- this weekend, I do commentary with J.S. Hawthorne. And then the next day, he pins uh former, I want to say former, at least WCW Cruiserweight Champion, if not WWE Cruiserweight Champion, Shannon Moore. Uh, in a he just interjects because he has like a money in the bank type thing in Shannon Moore's match with Bro Keller and steals Bro Keller's three legacy re- legacies wrestling heavyweight title. Yeah, so JS uh, Hawthorne is a sanctuary world champion and a three legacies champion now. And then while he's doing that, I am at AXW uh in Orrigsburg, Pennsylvania. They're making their return to Schuylkill County. Huge crowd, fun times, and uh, a really great show. And I did commentary there. So yeah, my voice is shot. And and all three shows had really good turnouts. People are yeah. showing up. People are supporting. Uh, AXW had a really good turnout for a brand new venue. Uh, three Legacies looked like they had a real packed house. Uh, so fun times to be all in the independent wrestling scene in the Northeast PA area. If you can see the tea bag, I'm literally drinking tea right now because that's how shot my voice is. Yeah. Well, you could. I'm sure you'll rest it this weekend screaming at WrestleMania events. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. But it's gonna be a lot of fun. Anything this week in wrestling that we want to cover? Any. Uh, I know the big one is uh, the Rock's beatdown of Cody Rhodes. They finally allowed them to touch before WrestleMania. Well, it wasn't uh, only Rock... that. We we got blood. We got blood on a blood Raw packet. show. Blood packet. I'm pretty sure he. No, it was blood packet because he. It was bleeding here, and then when the Rock smeared it into his hair, it never. It, like, the water made it look like it was running, but it wasn't coming out of anything. That disappoints was, me. Cody it was a packet. It, look, a packet. if you're a Rhodes, you 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 do real blood. If you're a Rhodes, we'll get yeah. into it. If, if you look at that, you saw that logo for today's show. Let's see if you can see the gig marks on Dusty. Yeah, I'll, I'll pull it back up here. He got caught me on the spot there. Okay, his hair's covering the gig marks, but, but you see me. a lot. There's a lot there. There's, There's gig a lot marks there. there. Yeah. Um. So that happened. Like bubble gum. The Rock. Uh. Out when the camera cut off, he still beat him up and put that on his social media so he can say attitude error. Now it, it drives and, the and question. People are be, freaking out, like acting like that's real. That was the thing. Like, Oh, the rock like, real. You, you come on. It's crazy. Like, it's crazy. Now, um, it, 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 here, here's the thing with wrestling. People want to believe. And, and the, I love it. I didn't let them. I'm yeah, not here yeah. to tell them that it wasn't. It, it was everybody. The rock really is a giant piece of shit. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, he really beat the hell out of Cody and just, yeah, he, he, that, that he, was Cody. A Cody James. may be, dead who yeah. knows yeah uh cody did sign a new deal before uh, he died before he died so that that's good for his family um but also uh people are saying uh the, some promos during monday night raw got a little crazy uh cm punk alluded to vince yeah um, yeah which was which is kind of nuts honestly i thought i usually get real bored with long promos in wwe but i thought seth cody and drew was fun like wwe has been uh has been firing on a lot of cylinders lately i think yeah uh the the whole like what did what did he say oh i i couldn't be bar uh impartial to you both you candy asses or something like that and then drew's like not pg like but people are thinking when the product goes to netflix because The Rock said, I can say whatever I want. We're not on Netflix yet. Or someone yeah. said it like that. Or Punk may have said it. Who knows? I believe it was Punk. Yeah. Um. People are thinking, though, when we go to Netflix, we may have a new Attitude-ish era or more of an edgier product on the Netflix deal. What do you think with that? I think that's going to be up to Netflix. Netflix is going to decide what type of show they want. They didn't spend... How much are they spending? $500 million a year? Yeah. For Raw to have say, hey, do whatever you want on that show. You know, it's it's up to you. We we're just here to provide you a platform. No, if you bought the show, you could decide. And it's also like a decision that they're gonna have to make. And the decision to take a PG was Vince's. So it the decision to make it the decision. Well, the PG to it thing there. came about when Linda joined the Trump administration, correct? No, it was or way was, before that. Or, no, when she no, I'm sorry, sorry, when she was running for political office. It was it was it was a little before that too. It was when they signed a deal with Mattel. Gotcha. It was when they moved their action figure deal from Jack's Pacific to Mattel. 
and Mattel did not want to be associated with a risque product. And it was just an overall thing of wanting to be more advertiser friendly. The, the big thing that they ran against for years and they still run against and it, it. It's lesser now than it's ever been, but there has always been this stigma about wrestling that it's low rent. The people who watch it are low class and you would get a fraction of ad money. Are they wrong? No. Um, <laughs> you would get a fraction of the ad money. Wrestling fans will not pay their rent, but they will get a $600 belt. God damn it. Yeah. <laughs> That's ex exactly. Yeah. And then they'll try to pawn it. Um, <laughs> but like Pedro Morales pawned the actual WWF title. But yeah, so they um, there's this perception and you would get pennies on the dollar for advertising on wrestling. Like a wrestling show with the same audience as a a show like soccer, soccer or hockey have what are seen as more of an upscale audience. Mm -hmm. um, a when they're seeing this, the advertising is it's a code for a white audience. That's that's what they're saying. It's like they don't come out and say it, but they tennis. say, yeah, tennis exactly, figure skating. Yeah, um, very good audience there, right? Uh, so it, there's there was a stigma against wrestling fans uh, that's still there, uh, and they had WWE has done a lot of work in the last 15 ish years to be more advertiser friendly and it's worked. They have car commercials. Now they have, if you remember back in the attitude era when they were at their hottest, it was like stacker two and girls gone wild. Mm -hmm. They were selling gas station speed and soft core pornography. That's what their advertising was. During and, the attitude, era. and that's something honestly, you have to think of. If if you want the attitude era back that bad, that's something you need to take into consideration. It's gonna cost you money to go more PG, or more a, away from PG, or possibly caught. You know what I mean? It's it's gonna be interesting to see. Right, and there's I always say this about anything like this. You, at some point, you gotta make a decision. Are you in it to make art? Are you in it to make money? WWE is in it to make money. Yeah. I'm I'm getting there too. I'm getting there too. I'm going PG, guys. No more cursing. So watch your fucking mouth. You know. <laughs> Sorry. I, it, Gosh, I literally, it. I literally have been playing. Uh, I just started. I just downloaded the show. This is kind of like off wrestling topic, but I've been playing the show, and I played with my buddy from uh, last week in wrestling podcast. Go subscribe to them, Dylan. Dylan plays the show. I've just downloaded, it, turned it on, and played a game against him. I don't want to brag. Five to three. I beat him. Just saying. Beat him. It's a swear competition. Uh, no, uh, but I some errors happened and I cashed in on them. Uh, but the show, as an, a non baseball fan, I will give I will tip my hat to the show. Oh, I, I was like, with the show, I, no, I got it. MLB, yeah. the show. No, uh, I, I'm aware. Yeah, I, I very, very it. fun game. Very fun game. Yeah, I love the show. But the entire time we were playing, we were talking to each other as that sketch kid. Have you been seeing the sketch? What's going on, brother? He's like a streamer, but he's like, he has like a he, he does like in his own version of Trump, like he like squints his eyes and he's like this make... is all foreign to me yeah or, he, sorry he, he, this is all international to me yeah he's he's very very popular but he's very entertaining he's like a doctor disrespect type deal rest streamer um he's been all over barstool and everything but yeah we play the show and i, I if, if i slip in and out of sketch or i think that's his name um that's why because it's stuck in my brain but yeah um and it, uh, AEW uh putting on some crazy matches on wednesday nights we had a uh, um, Will Ospreay versus Shibata. We had Takashita versus Strickland. Like we, man, they're putting together some interesting matchups over there. And the ratings keep dropping. That's the concerning thing. Which not not insane. Not saying anything about the quality, but the ratings keep dipping. Here's a question: Is it, it they're not putting out a bad product? But they're a, not. No. But WWE is hot, and when when WWE is hot, tribalism gets really bad. Like it's, it not, it's not only that, but people, most people. Don't tune in to see great wrestling. They tune in to see stars. And I'm not saying Okada will ask. I'm not saying these people can't be stars, but to the mainstream American audience, they're not stars because they're stars to the 120,000 people that watch New Japan. Yeah. So you got to kind of, and it takes time. It's not going to happen overnight. It's not going to, you know, it's not going to happen overnight, but yeah, it takes time. It'll, it'll, I hope they get there. Like, yeah, I'm, I'm rooting for them. I I love that type of wrestling, but yeah, I don't know if it's gonna. It has the mainstream potential of what WWE does because what WWE does is more character driven and more storyline driven, and AEW seems to be getting away from that a little yeah. bit. 
And um, we we also seen the debut of Jade. Jade makes her in uh, not in ring debut, but she come down and she laid some people up. And yep. uh, now we're getting her in a triple threat match. Her Naomi and Bianca will take on uh, Damage Control. Um, so that's that's super interesting. Um, trying to think what else uh, cover. Oh, we will be doing a Mania pre show. I'm not sure if BP's joining me. We'll do a we'll do one possibly maybe monday or tuesday we'll figure it out i don't know exactly when but we will be doing one around that time uh but uh, yeah so keep an eye out for that we will cover all things wrestlemania there any any other wrestling news out that you want to talk about i uh, matt cardona popping in oh matt cardona showed up last night so it's funny we were talking about collision they're like yo i think i'm gonna do a collision stream and i was like who cares is it is it live or is it recorded they're like oh it's live i said all right then i'll, I'll watch it and they're like who, who who's gonna answer adam copeland's open challenge i said it's gotta be i said if, if if i'm gonna say this is why you need to watch AEW now you need to give someone something exciting to watch so like if and I, my prediction was a former champion of the tnt comes out and challenges so it makes the champion relevant he has a banger match it's like oh my god i should have tuned into collision because that's why and I thought possibly it was going to be uh, Sammy Guevara making his return and then going after Adam Copeland and giving him a big match. I don't know if we're going to see Sammy Guevara for a little bit. Yeah. So fence has got to be mended first. Yeah. Do you remember um, when he had to go to sensitivity training? Do you remember why Banks, he had to the, go to the Sasha Banks comments? Well, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but um, but he, from what I was told, him and Sasha didn't make up for that, or they okay. did reach out to one another, and that has been cool. But who knows? Who knows? Yeah, who knows? You never know. Um, I don't think so. I think Sasha Banks maybe gave him a half a. I, I accept your apology because I don't think at any point in time she ever thinks she'd ever work with a guy. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> um, but then also, uh, so Matt Cardona comes out. I don't think Matt Cardona is all elite. Um, I think that was him showing up doing. No, the show it's probably and, a one off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was, was there for that little bit in the pandemic, but that was before yeah. he had fully reinvented himself, too. Yeah, we got Lady Frost on television, her versus Thunder right Rosa. Yeah. That was cool. She looked really good. I'm, I'm a big Lady Frost fan. Uh, yes, Ace Austin did resign to an, a, TNA. So out of all the hourglasses, the first one ran up and he turned it back over. <laughs> well, <laughs> so actually, Austin... that actually, that's not true. Some of the hourglasses had a going away party when TNA did their uh, shows at the arena in Philly. Oh really? It looks like the uh, the Motor City Machine Guns will be moving on. Yeah, Motor City Machine Guns will be moving on. I think Jordan Grace will be moving on um, to WWE think, most likely. And I, you know, who I think might be going with her, and they're really good friends. If you watch on social media, they're always together. I think Masha Slamovich got some eyes on her, and if she doesn't have eyes on her, I think her working Shayna this weekend is yeah. gonna get eyes on her, as they e should be. E ESPN put Masha Slamovich in a top ten wrestlers of the year list, and I think she was the only one on Impact to be put on that list, which is kind of crazy. Uh, so I, I definitely think that's another one. Um, another one we probably won't see for a while. Max Caster is attempting to get some heel heat and decided to go with sexist jokes and making jokes about child trafficking on Twitter. It I thought it was end. a baby face. Yeah, I don't know. It didn't end well. I will say this yeah. I, on a Max. I don't. I don't know anything about that. I'll take your. I'll take your word for it. Max Caster transforming himself, kind of swelling up, cutting up a little bit the, the abs. So who knows what happens there. Um, but yeah, one last question before we get off current day wrestling, I want to pose to you, BP. Um, a lot of contracts are coming up and moving around and going from place to place. Who who are some names you think would be good good for them to maybe get a new change of scenery, for, whether it be WWE to AEW, AEW to WWE? Capital letters underlined at 16 times, Ricky Starks. Ricky, well, I think being he just got wasted. Hurt on being he wasted just got hurt. in AEW. Yeah. Wasted. Um I think I think Malachi is pretty is going to be a shoe in to come back. I think yeah. Buddy Matthews is going to be a shoe in to come back. I would not be shocked if Sammy and Kevin, at the end of this year, beginning of 2025, I think we get we might get Kevin Steen and possibly El Generico back to AEW. Maybe, maybe yeah. I, I don't know what I don't know what their contract situation is. Yeah. I know one of the rumblings is maybe Finn Balor makes the jump. Finn, Drew, Sheamus, Becky, Seth. Kevin and Sammy, all contracts up at the end of 2020. I, I have the feeling that that Drew is low-key signed. Yeah, I do as well. Especially because they're going to put a title on him probably. Yeah, this, I, yeah. I, I think, <laughs> the, the only way I would think differently is if somehow Damian Priest walks out of uh, WrestleMania with that World Heavyweight title. Then maybe that might sway my opinion on that, but I'm, I don't think they would put the rocket on him like the way they have if he wasn't locked down. 
Yeah. Well, speaking of rockets, and I'm not talking Sean Smith. Let's uh, let's talk about one of the biggest rockets in professional wrestling. Uh, one of the guys who's trying Which, straight to the moon. Are you talking the about Owen Hart. What are we- you know, uh, a guy who you know didn't didn't have the 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 the, the abs didn't have the persona it wasn't as yeah, pretty as true. the rest that's true uh, i gotta catch up here had a little bit of a belly uh but it's okay because that he was the american dream dusty Rhodes. let's get into our topic of the night with the history of dusty Rhodes. oh how do you fit this into 40 minutes or, or whatever it is you go until you feel you need you, you feel- can do an entire <laughs> series on dusty Rhodes. this is one of the most pro we could do episodes on storylines dusty was in yeah you know what i mean so we are going to compile this and if there is listen we do the history of things but if you if somebody one of our listeners are like hey can you break down the the rivalry between dusty and insert here we i i would love to hear a broke down storyline of like like maybe in two years we do the history of the bloodline we revisit the bloodline or we visit like you know what i mean like storyline oh, wishful thinking that that story will be over in two years yeah, yeah we're only in the third we're only in the fourth inning we're only in the <laughs> This is why I don't watch baseball. It goes on too friggin' long. <laughs> um, yes. Yeah, so, so uh, we will do our best to give Dusty prep props. But the biggest thing that we will cover with this one, at least I hope so. I, d- I didn't really consult Brian too much, but our know the notes. But um, why why is Cody's story? What 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 is what does Dusty have to do with Cody telling his story, and why well, does he the, want this title so bad? The, the the Cody the Cody story is a small small part of it. But there's a larger, a larger implication on the whole thing, especially if you listen to Cody's theme and that whole wrestling has more than one royal family thing. That's that's a shot across the board at the McMahons. That that is precisely what that is. It's not about the Anawais, it's not about the bloodline, it's about the McMahons. It's about the McMahons. So we, we gotta start at the beginning here. We we don't start with Dusty Rhodes, even though he did always kind of hear uh, sit down you might not but you're already sitting but if you're if you're li- watching or listening you're not sitting down sit down you're not you're not going to believe this but a, a a wrestler may have told a tall tale um so <laughs> dusty Rhodes always said that he, I, I, it's not it's not uncommon knowledge that his real first name is virgil virgil runnels virgil riley runnels jr so that is the origin of the name virgil and we'll get into that a little bit the the um the now recently passed away, unfortunately. One of the most um, mocked wrestlers by the McMahons. Yep. Oh, well, and for good reason. And for good reason. This was their competition. This was their they, they were blood. The McMahons are bloodthirsty. And this was Vince, especially, and Linda, especially. And this was their big competition in, in that first run to the top. So he's born in 1945 in Austin, Texas. And he would always say, like, his parents never called him Virgil. They always called him Dusty. Because his dad's favorite baseball player was this guy for the new, then New York Giants, now the San Francisco Giants, Dusty Rhodes. And Dusty Rhodes is not like a household name in baseball. He is a a guy who's he's one of those guys that's known for one thing. And he's known for, uh, he play, again, he played for the New York Giants. He came up and started playing in the majors in 1952 when Dusty Rhodes, the wrestler, would have been about yeah, six or seven years old. So he, if he wasn't called Dusty because of Dusty Rhodes then. But the 1954 World Series was the the New York Giants against the heavily favored. Uh, then at that point, they were called the Cleveland Indians. Now they were the Cleveland Guardians. And Dusty Rhodes, the baseball Dusty Rhodes, was, was known for hitting two pinch hit home runs in that World Series that put the Giants over the top. And maybe I'm guessing that Virgil Rhodes liked that name, and that's how he kind of adopted it. It is a great it. name. It is a that's great an amazing name. name. It's an amazing yeah. name. But he was a big wrestling fan. He was in the other sports. He played baseball. He played football. He played college football. He actually played college football. He's from the Austin area, but he went to Amarillo, Texas, which is the funk territory or the Amarillo area, because he went to West texas uh west west texas state university which is now called west texas a&m and west texas state we that's that's an episode if you remember back on the old show we did a we did a um we did a 
a thing on Robbinsdale High School. Robbinsdale, yes. We saw it where like a bunch of different, a bunch of different um, wrestlers went there. So many, so many wrestlers played college football at West Texas State University. The most famous football player that ever, ever came out of there was Mercury Morris. He was a, I think he's in the NFL Hall of Fame. Uh, he's not, but he was part of the undefeated 1972 Miami Dolphins team. But if you look at the wrestling history of West Texas State, it is Tully Blanchard. It is Terry Funk, Ted DiBiase, Terry and Dory Funk Jr., Bruiser Brody, St- uh, I think I already said Stan Hansen, Tito Santana, Dusty Rhodes, all played college football at this this uh, this little, not a, a big powerhouse. But a lot of it was the allure of the funks, at least for Dusty Rhodes. Like Dusty Rhodes wanted to get into wrestling. He wanted he idolized Terry Funk and Dory Funk Jr. So he he would like kind of hang around. He would hang around this gas station that that uh, Terry or I'm sorry, I think it was a friend of Dory Funk Jr.'s own. And he would kind of just pester the funks whenever they would come around. Like Terry Funk would come around driving a Cadillac. He's like, oh, Dusty would be like, oh, that's a great car. I, I wish. That's a great call, baby. I wish I had one just like it. There's number three, even though he probably wasn't talking like that back then. So Dusty had it in his head that, that like, he played semi-pro football after college. He did a little bit of stuff like that, but he wanted to be a wrestler. He wanted to be a wrestler. That was that was where he was going to make his living. He even worked his way up to Boston and lied about being trained and got into some wrestling stuff. He finally becomes Dusty Rhodes, though, in world class, uh, the Von Erich territory. If anybody's seen the Iron Claw lately, uh, this is where he starts in. And he started as a bad guy. And, and that's kind of hard to fathom because, and I'll go on, I, I've said this a lot before, um, Dusty Rhodes, for, for my money, my opinion, I know Hulk Hogan drew more money. I know Steve Austin drew more money for a little bit of time. The Rock, John Cena, Dusty Rhodes is the greatest baby face of all time, and it's not close. Do you uh, think? Do you think Cody could be? No. No. Dusty Rhodes is the greatest baby face of all time. Um, I I, I know it. They're 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 chopping half his legs off because uh, the start, but like, I, I think if the if done right, Cody could be like I I literally see K- Cody as like the next John Cena. But yeah, I I, uh, I think. I think they've. I, I I don't see it. But then again, John Cena was kind of a heel. Like John Cena got booed. Like yeah. he 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 was well, a. Ba- it, well, it got to the point because he was a giant because, star. Because people like it gets to a point when you get when you the, when the baby face gets shoved down your throat so much and he always yeah. wins, it becomes cool to hate him. But yeah, it happened to Dusty. It happened to yeah. Dusty. But Dusty did it to himself too. Yeah. So so Dusty is in in Texas. He's a heel. He's with Gary Hart. And Gary Hart is a uh, playboy Gary Hart, a uh, famous wrestling manager who wanted him to change his name to Lonesome Rhodes because that was a character Andy Griffith played. But he's like, no, I'm going to be Dusty. Why? And, why? Why is Hart such a popular name amongst like managers and wrestling? I like, guess. Is, is it just I don't know. Is it like the because a lover boy gimmick or something? I forget why he got that name. I actually read Gary or listened to the audiobook version of Gary Hart's book at the um at the suggestion of somebody that we're very close with, uh, he's been on the, uh, the ultra before Jeff. Uh, he's like, Oh, you should listen to Gary. You should read Gary Hart's book. Okay. And uh, I don't know. I, I forget where he got the name Gary Hart, but he was like a pretty boy. Like it was one of those like gay overtone things back when people would get heel heat just because they were being effeminate or what people considered gay at the time. Yeah. So maybe heart because of hearts or something. I don't know. But whatever whatever it may have been so dusty was with him for a while he winds up really taking off though and really getting off to a hot start by linking up with dick murdoch and dick murdoch and dusty Rhodes wind up being a very very successful tag team called the texas outlaws they were wild they were in and out of the ring they were wild they were just brutal heels Almost like a southern version of the Crusher and Dick the Bruiser. Just we're gonna come in, we're gonna beat everybody up, we're gonna tear everything down. We're gonna we're gonna leave a trail of destruction in our path. And they 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 went all over the place. They were Texas, Kansas City, Detroit. They went to Australia. They went to he comes up all the time now because he's such a that that 
that invisible hand that controlled everything. Um, Jimsy. Uh, they go over to <laughs> they go over to Australia, the original World Championship Wrestling over in Australia, which for a little bit was the biggest money making. Uh, like it was the it was the best money you could make in wrestling because they controlled Jim Barnett and his partners controlled all of wrestling in Australia and they were making a mint. It was the, the, like it was the best payoff territory in wrestling. And Jim Barnett had rules like Jim Barnett, this little frail, openly gay man in this, um, in this business full of big, tough guys where, you know, homophobia runs rampant, at least in the storylines. Jim Barnett was in control. And... Here's a question. Now, wrestling is a different world, right? Um, it's fun. It's not funny, but it's interesting to learn how many people in the world of wrestling now are are representations of the LGBTQ community. I didn't know that growing up. Like growing up, I thought it was a hyper masculine industry, and but like now it's like you have people who are non-binary, are are gay, lesbian, trans, like. Do you, do you think there was a turning point for that in wrestling, or do you think it's always kind of been there? It's always been there. And, and and part of it is wrestling was always, like, the people who got into professional wrestling, especially then, even more than now, like, you got into professional wrestling by being a bit of an outcast. You got into professional wrestling because you wouldn't fit in anywhere else. Yeah, You, you had to really want it. Like, they, they if you didn't have a an in, if you didn't have a parent or somebody like that in the business, they tried to to keep you out of it yeah uh, especially if you were a wrestler not so much if you're a promoter but wrestling for all of its bluster for all of its you know, racism and homophobia front facing and obviously this isn't universal but especially for the standards of the time surprisingly tolerant like everybody knew yeah. pat patterson was gay nobody cared everybody yeah. knew jim barnett was gay nobody cared they may have you know said awful words to them um they think, well, it, well it was also a thing too where like behind this behind the curtain of wrestling you had your sputniks and you had your people who were like we don't care if you're black white green purple whatever it is yeah. we don't care if you're gay straight lesbian whatever it may be if you can make money out there yep. the only we one love we, you yeah you know only, what i mean like cared about was green the only and, 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 and if we green. have to lead into these undertones to go make a buck let's do it you know like roddy piper did some of the most racist stuff in oh, terms yeah. of like wrestling, but mm -hmm. he was the first one to be an ally to those people as well. And, and a lot of it is because wrestling is very much a fraternity. Mm -hmm. It's like, and, and, and especially then in the kayfabe days where it was a closed business, like you traveled, like even look now, like if you look now at all of the people who, in wrestling who seem that it, it's, 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 it's not, I mean, it's more open now than it's ever been, but look at how many wrestlers, date other wrestlers mm -hmm. like it's because it's a still a fairly close fraternity they spend a lot of time together especially if you're in the same company you're traveling together it's not a it's not a coincidence they, this they, is why content creators pro tip don't talk shit about wrestlers on your content because they're all friends yeah yeah <laughs> just silly yeah it's a club okay. and you're not in it yeah it's it's okay to not respect or like the character but when you start attacking them personally right. and saying that as a person they're this but then you're like but my favorite wrestler is this and i don't know why he doesn't answer my dms oh, <laughs> there's a reason <laughs> a little busy probably a little busy yeah, yeah. so dusty well, and i'm Dick just saying on the even from the on, on an independent level like right when someone's like, oh, I, I hate Ricky Price. And then like, how come this guy doesn't message me? Because him and Ricky are buddies. <laughs> like, and and that buddy probably heard you talk about the hell is that? Ricky Price. Ricky Price is like the nicest I, I, guy I, I mean, I, I don't understand it either. The guy's a gem. I don't think I'd ever, like, even if you at one point didn't like him, that's probably the stupidest thing ever. <laughs> um, But anyway, <laughs> so how could somebody not like Ricky Price? Um, But real quick, do you see Ricky and Junie's fucking bit? Yeah, didn't no, see what they I, I wasn't there when it, I wasn't there when it was filmed. I was oh, uh, elsewhere. Yeah. But I, dude, as it, soon as as both of us, as soon as yeah. we both seen Ricky and then we seen Junie, we're like, they need to. We need to put those two together. Yeah, it yeah, didn't work and, out for them in the Stampede, though. It didn't yeah. work out for them, unfortunately, in the Stampede. T TBA. I think that's going to be a team. Uh, two people you need to keep an eye out when it comes to making really good wrestling content and be wrestlers. Yeah, yeah. one hundred percent, one hundred percent on that. So uh, where we last left Dusty Rhodes, he was in uh, Flor Florida. Uh, we're getting way ahead of myself there. He is in 
Australia with with Dick Murdoch and Jim Barnett has some tight rules. You have to he wants all of his wrestlers to be a strong representative of his company. He doesn't want wrestlers out there. He wants you to be dressed nicely. He doesn't want you, you know, doing things that are unbecoming of a an upstanding citizen. And here are the Texas Outlaws. They're dressed like they just stepped off the farm and their jeans and their western shirts and their cowboy hats and their is spitting tobacco juice on the ground and getting in the bar fights and and Jim Barnett catches wind of this, jobs them out around the horn, and they're sent back out, back to the United States. So they're out of a job in the big money territory. They wind up in the AWA as the uh, the, the villainous Texas Outlaws get in the fights with like the Crusher and Dick the Bruiser and other teams like that. Um, Billy Robinson and, and, and whomever he's teaming with at the time. This is a little before Greg Gagne was a, um, a wrestler. But Dusty and and... Dusty and Murdoch would sometimes have heel versus heel matches too. And one of the heel versus heel matches they had was against a great tag team, an amazing one of the all time great tag teams, Nick Bockwinkle and Ray Stevens, who were the pretty boy heels. And then you had the tough wild heels. And usually when you have those two teams and they're both heels, or those two acts and they're both heels, the one that's a little more, bit more of a gruff fighter winds up being the de facto baby face. So even though they were all heels, Dick Murdoch and Rhodes are the, the baby faces. And this is where even in the early 70s, mid 70s, you start to get a little germination of what Dusty Rhodes is going to be. Because when they're doing the thing where like, okay, you're, you're kind of going to be the baby faces for tonight. Not full baby face, but you're going to be a little good. You would have those things where it's just a little bit of, they, they literally would call it the, and, and this is the term of the time, the black baby face comeback, like what Thunderbolt Patterson would do or Bobo Brazil would do. And it's a lot of what du what Dusty would do later. Dusty took a lot from Thunderbolt Patterson, who's going to the Hall of Fame this week, where he would do a, a dance. It would con be considered like a uh, a jive, a, a jive type dance. And he like usually when a, uh, a black wrestler would do this, they would end it with a headbutt. Dusty would end it with a big elbow that he would become very known for the, the spin up. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, he does. Dusty becomes more animated. Yeah, and, and at this point, uh, one of the people that's training in in the uh, AWA at this point in the uh, early to mid seventies is uh, the guy who would go on to become Ric Flair. Um, who did he ever Rick, beat? This becomes a very famous thing where Ric Flair originally wanted to be called Ramblin' Ricky Rhodes. He wanted to be the cousin of Dusty Rhodes, and it just never happened. <laughs> Because Ric Flair was a lot bigger back then. He was almost 300 pounds. He kind of looked like Dusty. Yeah, so he, he, was, he, wanted, he was a thick boy. Yeah, he, he wanted to be rambling Ricky Rhodes. But it doesn't happen. And Rhodes winds up going to where he finds himself. He becomes the Dusty Rhodes everybody knows. He goes to Florida. He goes to Florida with uh, quite possibly the... Not quite possibly. The most respected booker of all time, Eddie Graham. And in Florida is where Dusty Rhodes winds up be becoming the American dream. But initially, it's a heel gimmick. The American Dream is at first a heel gimmick. It is, I am the American Dream. I am what you want to be, and you will never be. And he comes out in like fur coats and talk about driving a Cadillac. And I'm more, I'm richer than you. I have everything you're never going to have. So essentially, he's stuff. Ric Flair before Ric Flair. Pretty much, he's. I mean, Buddy Rogers was already doing it at that point. Yeah, yeah. But it's more about flaunting like everything he's got. So yeah, it's it's a lot like that. Buddy Rogers, Ric Flair, uh, cocky type heel. Yeah. Um, but they, they do realize after a while, you know, we've got something. This guy's gonna this guy should be a baby face. This guy can connect with that crown. And they subtly do it. He gets a shot against Jack Briscoe, who was the big baby face at the time in Florida. Jack Briscoe was the first uh Florida regular to win the NWA title. Jack Briscoe was the local hero, and he comes back to defend against Dusty Rhodes, and he has to kind of cheat. He has to he has to do some things that you wouldn't want to do to try to save his title. And eventually Dusty gets frustrated and throws him over the top rope. And the crowd kind of turns. The crowd kind of turns to Dusty. Uh, they maybe get a little sick of Jack Briscoe. He's been around for a while. So finally, uh, they make a decision. Dusty's being managed by Gary Hart again. He's teaming a lot with this uh, um, this longtime Florida heel, Pac Song, against Eddie Graham and his son, Mike Graham. And eventually, Pac Song turns on Dusty. And Mike Graham is 
trying to go in there to save him. He's the younger, he's like a 23 year old kid at this point. And he's like, no, 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 let them fight it out. The Dusty's done everything to us. Don't save him. Finally, Mike Graham comes in to save Dusty Rhodes. And they're, they're like the, the, the big baby face act. And this is where it's a supernova. Dusty Rhodes is the biggest thing in Florida. He's the biggest baby face probably in the United States, if not the world to the point where your big traveling attractions at this point, and he would he would he was mainly in Florida, but he would travel around a bit. And he, the biggest traveling attractions at this point are the NWA World Champion, Andre the Giant, and Dusty Rhodes. Are your your real, three... real quick question? You said about best biggest or best baby faces. Do you think do you think uh, Bruno's up there? Yeah, I mean Bruno. The thing I will say for Bruno that I uh, that I will say for Dusty, that I don't know if I, I would say for Bruno. I don't know if Bruno could have done it everywhere. And gotcha. here and same thing for like a John Cena, Hulk Hogan. Well, Hulk Hogan did do it in, in AWA, so he probably could have done it anywhere. But Dusty Rhodes, that act traveled, I think, better than Bruno would. And even when you try to strip him and make him something different, he still found a way to get over in WWE, even when he wasn't kind of supposed to. Yeah, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. And so, so, and that's the thing because Dusty wound up because he would take that jive talk. He would take that. A lot of it was patterned after Muhammad Ali, Thunderbolt Patterson, people like that. He would he would dance. He would. Ba he would Backlund didn't have the charisma. Yeah, no, Backlund, no, no, Backlund yeah. was. Backlund, Backlund didn't was, get it. Backlund didn't find the character until he went crazy. Right. No, Backlund yeah. was an incredible <laughs> wrestler. Backlund did a great job keeping that territory afloat, but he was never that transcendent ultra charismatic backman's so good at being crazy i don't know if he's crazy or not <laughs> backland was basically <laughs> wwf sansa to Vern Gagne in the Yo, awa he even meeting him there's times where he would like slip out and he'd be like "Yo, guys like i appreciate everything you're doing here and like doing this and then he's like, I, like have, what? I have no I, I have no bad words to say about bob yeah i love him but like a whole time i'm like is he is he a little like or is that is he doing his thing like you never know like he's from that old school he might be working a little bit dude do you think he worked us when he got in the ring and did the headstand for no reason maybe what do you mean by working us like it's something a crazy person would do like well, he got that, in the that, ring. that's a very bob Backlund thing he would do the harvard step test he was always he was always all about showing off his feats of athleticism he still oh, does, it was he still so does it. nobody was paying attention like Bob, uh, so real quick, Bob Backlund story. We're at a meet and greet. Bob Backlund gets up from his table and it's, it's like, I think it's early too. It's like, I don't even think the doors have opened yet. Like it's, it's like a weird moment at the con where it's like dead and Bob just gets in the ring and we're like, is he going to like run the ropes? Like is Bob Backlund? And we're like, everyone just pays attention. He goes, excuse me, everyone. I need your attention. And then he he gets in like a yoga pose and then tries to put his his knees on his he's on a head and like a headstand and then he puts his knees to his elbows and tries to extend his legs and falls like and tries it like two or three times and then like kind of gets it and everyone claps and then he just goes thank you and then just walked back to his table and he got it pretty well let's let's give Bob Backlund some <laughs> but I mean it was so random it was so random. <laughs> I'm sorry, I derailed Especially it. Especially for a man who at the time was like 72 oh years my old. God. I loved him. He was, dude, he was choking Bob people was out. Amazing. Bob he was, was great. Everybody got put in a headlock. Like when we took a photo with him, yeah, I didn't you know got, if he was going to. You get the crossface yeah. chicken wing with Bob Backlund. Yeah, it was, it was unbelievable. It was, it, <laughs> but so even that age still working, like still working. Yeah. 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 So the, so the 1970s in Florida is when Dusty Rhodes really comes into his own. And, and the thing that I really think helped, makes him transcend a guy as a babyface like a Bruno. Bruno had a mass appeal. Bruno was incredibly charismatic. Bruno was in his, Bruno had his big stronghold in the Northeast for a reason. Everybody loved Bruno, but he was mainly for the Italian crowd. Yeah. Like he was, and the Pittsburgh crowd, because he was like adopted Pittsburgh burger. Uh, so like like it, it was mainly for the Italian crowd. Pedro Morales was mainly for the Puerto Rican crowd. Ivan Putski was mainly for the Polish crowd. Like that was Vince McMahon Senior, Vincent J McMahon's whole bread and butter. He had uh, these ethnic baby faces, and then a lot of his heels were Irish, because the cops that would give all the other people crap were usually Irish. Um, like that's how Hulk Hogan got his name, because Hogan is an Irish name. Yeah, and he he gave Vince Vince J McMahon gave him that name when he was a 
a heel in, in the WWF. And, and Dusty did a lot of traveling. And and he, he was his whole thing was always a chase for the NWA title. But Eddie Graham never wanted him to win the title long term because if he won the title long term, he would have to travel with it. And Eddie Graham always wanted him to stay in Florida to a certain extent. But he would have his trips other places. Um, and the one that's going to really tie into what we're talking about now and finishing the story and and all that is in, in 1977 when superstar Billy Graham is the, the WWF world champion. And he's 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 a transition champion. He's he's there to transition the belt from Bruno San Martino to Bob Backlund. But he was a transition champion, even though he was champion for like 10, 11 months. He was told literally before he won the title, you're winning the title from Bruno on this day. You're losing it to Backlund on this day at the Garden. Like he knew, even though it was about a year out, when he was losing the title in the Who. That's how far out they built, they booked the WWF back then. But one of the stops along the way the biggest stop along the way for dusty roads or for billy graham was dusty roads it was a, a program a, a two or three match program in the garden in the fall of 1977 where roads and graham went at it and that's when you had the that's when you had that promo in the hamburg field house where he's talking about uniting all the races and stuff like that and that was dusty's appeal where Bruno was just for the Italians. This guy was just for this guy. This Not just for, but mainly for this. Mm -hmm. Like Dusty Rhodes had that universal appeal. Everybody loved Dusty Rhodes, especially he had, especially had the crossover appeal to black fans Yeah, because he didn't look down on them. He was one of them. He was, like, I, I, he, was he was, he would talk about, you know, wanting brown sugar before that was like socially acceptable. When interracial couples were something people would shudder at the thought of, Dusty Rhodes was saying it was okay. And and all that stuff. And so he the big thing that the Cody talks about, like the title, like his dad could never really secure was he came close against superstar Billy Graham, but never wanted. He beat him by count out. He uh, he he lost a Texas death match. Um, it, it was always like he got this close to beating superstar Billy Graham, but he couldn't do it. He did finally win the NWA title. But it was a very short run because you had to be a heel. He wasn't seen as a as good of a good enough worker to really carry the NWA title around the country, and mainly because you know he wanted to stay in Florida. But this was back in that the money is in the chase mindset. A babyface can't be a long term champion. That's how the NWA operated, and so that kind of pigeonholed Dusty. And he he had his run in in um in Georgia a little bit. That's where we talked about the Ole Anderson feud. But finally, he leaves Florida in 1983, and he joins up with Jim Bro Jim Crockett Promotions around the time of the first Starcade. And he's coming in not just to be their top babyface because they're going to turn Ric Flair heel, but he's also coming in to be the Booker. He's also coming in to be the uh, to a degree. Did, did, didn't Dusty get his promo stuff from Thunderbolt Patterson? To a degree, he got a lot of his mannerisms in the ring from Thunderbolt Patterson. And a little bit of the promo stuff, a, a little bit of it was Dusty himself. A lot of it was Muhammad Ali. If mm -hmm. you're going to give any one person credit of, of having the main influence over Dusty's promos, it's Muhammad Ali. Yeah. So with Jim Crockett Promotions, Dusty is now in the driver's seat. He is booking. And he's big. his big program is with Ric Flair. And they do a big thing uh, at the first, not the first arcade, the second arcade, the million dollar challenge. They, the whole thing is the winner's going to get a million dollars. It's Ric Flair and Dusty Rhodes with Joe Frazier as the referee. And Flair wins. Uh, it's a controversial finish where Frazier stops it because of a minor cut. And it was supposed to set up a, a match with Dusty Rhodes and Joe Frazier, but Joe Frazier got cold feet. So then we have the, there's an infamous angle in 1985 where Dusty, Ric Flair says he's going to help Dusty take out the Russians. Like we have our differences, but I'm an American, you're an American. Let's take out these Russians. And it winds up being where the four horsemen are formed because as soon as they get in that cage, it's the same way Uncle Oli did. We talked about it in the Oli episode. Yeah. As soon as they get in that cage, he turns on him, and, and the Russians, the Andersons, and Ric Flair all beat down Dusty Rhodes. And then they link up with Tully Blanchard, and the four horsemen are formed, and they're off to the races because now, now the war is on, and Vince McMahon is stomping out every territory, but the one territory he can't. The one nut he can't crack is the old Jim Crockett Promotions Mid-Atlantic Territory, which 
the NWA, other than them, gets so eroded, gets so beaten down. Florida dries up. World Class goes off and does its own thing. Mid-South goes off and does its own thing. Harley Race jumps to the WWF. AWA is becoming a shell of its former self. Like, basically, Jim Crock Promotions, for all intents and purposes, in the late 80s, is the NWA. And Dusty Rhodes is basically running the ship. Jim Crockett's the money guy. Jim Crockett's the guy who signs the paychecks. Dusty Rhodes is running the company. He is running the day-to-day -day wrestling operations. He's booking. He's arranging the tours. It is his vision. He is in control. And that is why there was such resentment from the McMahons to Dusty Rhodes. Because it wasn't only that Dusty... It wasn't just Jim beating them. It was, it was Dusty. Yeah, no. They would... Yeah, it was... It was like if... Like Crockett was the guy in like the Crockett family owned it, but Dusty was the guy in charge. And Dusty was the guy who, yeah, it was like, yeah, we're we're fighting war with Dusty. It wasn't we're mm -hmm. fighting war with Jim Crockett. There was no there was no gimmick making fun of Jim Crockett. There was Virgil. Yeah. Virgil was there just to make fun of Dusty Rhodes. Akeem was the African dream that did the 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 jive dance and came out to a song called Jive Soul Bro. Is to make fun of Dusty. It's all their 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 target is Dusty, not Crockett. I loved it though when I was a kid. It, I love. I didn't know it was a, a rib. I was like, I love the American Dream. This it, it, African it, Dream guy's funny. It's just like when WW when they had the Monday Night War in the '90s, and for those that two and a half years, WCW was kicking them from one end of the country to the other. WCW was dominating them, has them on the ropes. Vince McMahon never had the, never had the the couldn't swallow his pride to say Eric Bischoff is beating me. It was always Ted Turner. It was yeah. always Ted Turner's beating me. Ted Turner didn't have. Other than signing the paychecks and approving the budgets, Ted Turner had a damn thing to do with WCW. Yeah, it was Bischoff. Bischoff was beating him. Um, but that that's that's not about Dusty. So so Crockett's going really well. They have a really hot eighty five, a really hot eighty six. They're not as nationally spread as Vince is. Vince is getting into Chicago. He's getting in the all the way out to like California. But... Real seg quick segue. We talked about Oli. Where does Dusty rank as one of the best promoters of all time? Bookers, you mean? Bookers, yeah. I, 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 we, when we on that episode, we were talking about the Mount Rushmore. I, he's one of my top four. Yeah. Uh, I forget what I said on that. It was Eddie. I, I believe I settled on Eddie Grant or Eddie Graham, Dusty Rhodes, Vince McMahon, and I don't remember who I had as my fourth. Yeah. Is Bishop, Bishop and Heyman's got to be close, right? Heyman, I respect. Uh, Bischoff, I, Bischoff, I think had one really good idea: the NWO. Yeah. And and let's sign all the old WWF guys who about, think they're done, but they aren't. I mean, NWO, Sting, and DDP. I would say like that was like the heart and blood of. WCW no, DDP wasn't that big. I, I like DDP, but DDP wasn't that big. Uh, he, Goldberg that was, was bigger than DDP. Goldberg was bigger than DDP. I, I'll give you, but I, I don't like it. Uh, <laughs> I agree, yeah. but I don't like it. Um, I, I DDP was probably the closest person that got me to watch WCW. All right, yeah, fair enough. Everybody likes who they like. So uh, DDP versus the Flock is what is what really okay. Yeah. Oh, when the they were on, they were they were on a like a a morning television show, like a Good Morning America, mm -hmm. and the flock jumped DDP. I was like, oh, yeah, wow. they just did on Good Morning, like a morning <laughs> radio. Like I was like, all right, I like this DDP guy. Like he he's something. I'm, I'm and then Raven talked to that grunge kid in me. I was like, I like this story. I was into it. I a lot it. of the Ra a lot of the Raven character came from Raven. So yeah. a lot of that a lot of that credit goes to Raven himself. Mm -hmm. And so. Yes, uh, to be honest, Bischoff got the NWO concept from the angle in New Japan. Uh, New Japan, yeah, he was over there for a New Japan versus UWFI thing, which was literally UWFI was a promotion that had existed. It wasn't like it would be. It was kind of like when WWF bought WCW and then they did the invasion, except it was done much better in Japan uh, because people really believed it was two companies that didn't like each other, and so that that um, that seat is in there. Her Abrams uh, just missed the Mount Rushmore. <laughs> I, I I'm I'm trying to rack my brains on who I had as the other guy, and I can't think of it. Yeah, I, 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 don't, I don't recall I, either. I Go can't. back and listen to last week's episode. We do the history of Ole Anderson. <laughs> uh, off the top of my head, maybe Bill Watts. It was too. Uh, too it might have been Bill Watts. Off the top been. of my head, maybe if I if I if I had to be pressed to think of somebody right now, Bill Watts. And, and thank you, uh, Ma, for hanging out. First time I've seen you in the chat, so I appreciate you stopping by. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe, and check out some other content. We'd love to have you hang out and talk some more. Uh, for the people listening to the audio platforms later on, uh, we are always live on YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and X. Uh, YouTube is the hotspot. That's where everyone, for the most part, chats and hangs out. So if you want to hang out in the conversation, uh, we are live every Sunday night around 9 o'clock unless something crazy happens and we let you know we're not doing it that week.
Uh, quick plug there. All right, let's get back to Dustin. Yeah, next week, probably not. It's going to be the WrestleMania. Yeah, no, next <laughs> week, no tornado tag. Yeah. So, so Dusty, like most bookers, and I, I think you're kind of seeing this little in AEW to kind of tie it to modern day. Like, it's hard to, especially if you're booking like weekly television. It's one thing if you're booking an indie, you have to do one show a month. But if you're booking weekly TV and the arena shows and all this stuff, eventually you run out of good material. And, 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 and from like 86, 80, 85, 86, 87, Crockett had such a great roster, but it was the same people for years and years and years. And people got burnt out and their money was, and Vince was pl- uh, doing the Vince stuff of, oh, you can't run Starcade. If you run Starcade, you're not going to get WrestleMania. You have to have the Survivor Series instead. You can't do both. Um, so, so, and then they had to give people guaranteed contracts so they wouldn't jump to Vince. And and Crockett and especially Dusty got big heads. Dusty thought he was, Dusty thought he was John Wayne. John Wayne was his idol, and they started getting. They bought this big office in Texas that they didn't need. They started flying around on private jets, and eventually, didn't take long. 1988, Jim Crockett has to sell. Jim Crockett has to sell to Ted Turner and Turner um, TBS, and Dusty's still there as the head booker. But now you have that corporate oversight. Jim Jim Crockett just let Dusty go. And and then when Turner comes in, we have to tone down the blood. We can't say foreign object. Like Turner had this whole thing from CNN. Like you can't say the word foreign instead of saying foreign, say international. So so Dusty would joke and have people call it an international object. If you ever heard the term international object, that's where it comes from. A Dustyism. And, and Dusty kind of outright defies them. In late 1988, Dusty has them do a, in very late 1988, Dusty has them do a an angle because he's turning the Road Warriors heel. He's turning Hawk and Animal heel. And they have him turn on Dusty by, you know those spiked shoulder pads they had? They had Dusty Rhodes get spiked in the eye with, with a shoulder pad. And his eye, and obviously blades like run under the eye. Uh, one thing we to- totally overlooked is his legendary feud with Terry Funk. Terry Funk, they, they did a thing where like Dusty beat him in a, lights out match by blinding him in the eye and funk like literally bladed his eye and had a droopy eye for the rest of his life uh there there was a thing where dusty had an angle where (laughs) where he he got attacked and his face got paralyzed so they he had his face get shot up with novocaine so he literally comes on the tv in florida with a droop like a half paralyzed face to sell an angle pro wrestling baby but but this is a this is a step too far and there's already there's also like dusty's already on thin ice when he books that because Dusty and Ric Flair at this point are not getting along. Rick doesn't like the way he's being booked. He's the champion, but he's always booked to lose. He's always booked to look weak. It's cheapening the title. He thinks that's a big reason why they're losing because they don't see the title as important because even though Flair's a champion, whenever the title's on the line, Flair's losing. Yeah. And Dusty's like, well, I'm the boss. You're going to lose if I say you're going to lose. And Flair wants to leave. So for the, Dusty's original plan for the main event of Starcade 98 is – Rick Flair against Rick Steiner for the NWA title in a cage. Rick Steiner wins in five minutes. And it's and the reason he picks Rick Steiner, Rick Steiner's over. Like Rick Steiner's very popular, but he's not like world champion popular at this point. But Rick Steiner has a reputation for being the toughest guy in the locker room. And it's basically you're getting that cage with, with Rick Steiner, and either he, you're gonna let him win it or he's gonna take it from you. It's up yeah. to you. Yeah. And, yeah. It, it, it's it, it's uh it's go do your job or we're gonna make we're gonna make sure yeah. you have to do the job yeah yeah it's uh, rick steiner's the the guy who's gonna come in as like the uh the shooter the policeman and the thing with that makes us an issue is when ted turner buys wc uh, buys jim crockett promotions ted turner had a favorite wrestler and it wasn't dusty Rhodes. it was rick flair he he the main guy he wanted to make sure he took care of was rick flair because rick flair was ready to leave there were rumors even before that that Ric Flair was going to wrestle Randy Savage at the first SummerSlam in 1988 before they did the Mega Powers and the Mega Bucks. But but Ted Turner made sure it didn't happen. He made sure Ric Flair was taken care of. So after the after this strife with Flair and after the the spike angle, Dusty Rhodes is fired. Dusty Rhodes is fired. And Sting, Sting is involved at this point in time too, right? Yes, yeah, Sting Sting and Rick Steiner both came over in '87 when they bought the UWF, which was Bill Watts's promotion. He was he was doing really well. The economy in that area in the deep south because it was so tied to the oil industry tanked, and he was he had, he couldn't he couldn't compete with Vince and Crockett, and that that was an opportunity for Dusty to bring in some new blood and to re, revitalize things, but he basically buried the UWF. Made it's like usually 
usually when a wrestling company buys another wrestling company, they don't make the company they butt look that good. If you've yeah. ever noticed, if you ever noticed like Ring of Honor, if they ever did a Ring of Honor versus AW feud, it wouldn't last that long. Like basically there are no Ring of Honor stars except for people they don't want to put on AW. Um, or it would always, be one of those. It'd be one of those things where they were used to be a ROH stars, yeah. but now they're AEW stars, right? Ring of they, Honor has basically become AW Dark. Have you seen um, that they're AW re-releasing, Dark yeah, Ring of Honor? They're re-releasing ROH figures, but they're oh. doing like old Kenny under ROH, old Claudio with like the the jacket. Like yeah. they're they're doing like a whole new line of ROH figures, but they're starting with the classics, like classic Daniel, classic uh Kenny, Kenny, classic Claudio. It's, awesome. it's pretty it's pretty fun, yeah. Awesome. So Dusty gets fired, Ric Flair wins the power struggle. Dusty tried to bring back a Florida territory. Uh, at this point, unfortunately, Eddie Graham had passed. Uh, very, very sad circumstances. He um yeah, the he um lost the battle with depression essentially. Uh, and then, so Mike Graham, Eddie's son, and Steve Kern, uh, who was a, a longtime star there, they wind up starting instead of they were, wanted to basically revive Championship Wrestling from Florida, but they couldn't use the name, so they called the Professional Wrestling Federation. And they have um, just basically whoever is not tied down to like WCW or AWA or WWF at the time, Terry Funk's there, Bam Bam Bigelow's there, the Nasty Boys, because uh, Dusty's sister-in-law and jerry sag's sister-in-law or, or sisters um and then uh dustin rose is getting a start there scott hall's there uh very young mike awesome and diamond dallas page uh dusty's other br- um dusty's other brother-in-law the big steel man who would go on to become tugboat is there and it was not long like they, they it wasn't long before dusty kind of saw the writing on the wall this isn't gonna work like we're, we're trying to do something he can't do anymore so it wasn't long after it was only about five months in that dusty's like i guess i gotta swallow my pride and call vince and that's when dusty comes in in 1989 with the polka dots shortly after we just covered wrestlemania 5 a, a few months a few weeks ago yeah it was between wrestlemania 5 and that summer slam so like the spring of 1989 that you start seeing the vignettes for the american dream uh, doing all these odd jobs. He it's Dusty Rhodes uh, wearing no shirt and he's got like a butcher's apron on, talking about Americana. I forget it was Americana meat market. You can beat my prices, but you can't beat my meat. That's four. Um, and it, it, he was the common man. And yeah, it was yeah he was going to dress up in polka dots. They brought in Sapphire, who was this old fan from Kansas City in her mid fifties, an older, um, heavy set black woman to to um to dance with dusty and and all that wasn't and, there a bit is it wasn't there a bit with sapphire too like she was supposed to be a, a, a uh um <clears throat> a spoof of somebody else like the name sapphire or something not to my knowledge oh i thought there was supposed to be like possibly a rib to that. not to my knowledge but but even though it was all pretty much set up to to make him look like a fool dusty got it over you couldn't stop him. Dusty got it over. Dusty got it over. He did, like literally, it, it, he was one of their top baby faces at that point. Uh, to the point that they would push him. Like he, they were never going to let him get close to Hogan level or Ultimate Warrior level or or anything like that. But he was he was very popular and he was doing well. And then they have him in 1990. He's there for about a year and a half. In 1990, they have him really, really, really put over strong. This new guy called the Undertaker. And shortly after that, uh, Vince is like, "Yeah, we're gonna let you go soon. We're gonna finish you up here." And he he actually teams with his with Dustin for a little bit. Dustin Rose's first WWF appearances are in late 1989, early 1990. Wasn't Vince also telling Dusty at this point you had to lose weight, and he was making restrictions? Like he he's like like trying to like force him to like change up a lot about himself and make more than him, likely giving him tasks that were kind not impossible, but like. This guy's been a heavier set dude his whole life, yeah. and now he's working you, and he has to drop forty. And like, more than likely, more more so than that, I think it was like, like he just it wasn't Vince's ideal of a wrestler. His ideal of a wrestler, especially a babyface, was a guy who was in excellent condition. And Dusty was in his mid forties at this point, and that's like Vince wanted to move away from Hogan when he hit forty. Like Vince. Vince was all about, like, Vince moved away from Randy Savage. That's why Randy Savage went to WCW. He still had about, like, six, seven good r- years in the ring ahead of him. And Vince was like, no, you're too old. I want to make you an announcer. That's why Savage left. He knew he still had something in the tank. 
He didn't. He never wanted to leave. Yeah. Batten, obviously, they, they they, I think he. I think they were saying too that he he was cool with being an announcer. He was he was okay with taking that role, but he said he wanted to do one more story, and that mm-hmm. one angle he wanted to do was with Shawn Michaels for the Intercontinental they, Title. Yeah, and they said no, and he, there he's like, well, then I'm out. Yeah, could you imagine what that what, what that match could have been? It would have been because there were two guys that like to have everything kind of meticulously planned out. They yeah. would have been right up each other's alley. So Dusty winds up coming back to WCW in 1991 as the Booker. Dusty comes in and he is he has an interview segment called the Bull Drop In. They 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 brought him back as the Booker, but one of the things he was really really bad with late in his run, even if he wasn't the champion. Uh, back in his late late in his run with Crockett, even if he wasn't a champion, it was a Dusty Rhodes show. He was not going to cede the spotlight to anybody, and it really stifled the growth of like other baby faces, like a Sting, like Alex Luger when he turned baby face, and the key to call off because nobody could outshine Dusty on the baby face side, and and fans were starting to get a little sick of it after a while, uh, and that just happens. No matter how good of a baby face you are, that's going to happen. And then when they comes back to WCW in 1991, they're like, well, you're going to you're going to be a behind the scenes guy. You're not going to wrestle full time anymore. And he would wrestle like very occasionally. But he, he was booking for a little while until that's when Dustin comes in. But after a while, it's not really working out. So they and, and then Ric Flair's coming back and, and they, they weren't at each other's throats like they were. But. But they really, really, really just want Dusty to become an announcer. And that's kind of how he ends his run in WCW is mainly as an announcer, maybe as a. And that that's another thing that's very memorable. If uh, if you ever think of Dusty Rose as an, as an announcer, he had some he wasn't a great color commentator like a Jesse Ventura or even like a Bobby Heenan. Like everything was eloquent, but he had just these little things that are so memorable, like talking about getting the plunder, going to the pay window, baby, clubbering. He got a bicycle, like all those things are so yeah. memorable for that's five by the way yeah. um <laughs> so that uh, that's something and then i think his last big match in wcw probably was uh a war games from 1994 where it's him dustin and the nasty boys against terry funk colonel parker bunkhouse buck and dick slater and that's the um or Aaron anderson not dick slater and that's the um that's kind of the last big thing from dusty Rhodes. he had a few things with ecw um after wcw closed just because he needed he joined the nwo yeah he joined the nwo for a little bit as a heel manager um and too, then too sweet baby too sweet six all right we're, we're very <laughs> you close have here. to say sweet and we're, dusty. We're, we're very close here <laughs> well actually as well wcw is still going he left and he left and did a few matches with ecw he came back toward the end of wcw in fact one of the last angles they did was when Ric Flair was the president of uh, WCW. They had a match where if somebody lost, Ric Flair would have to kiss Dusty's ass. And so literally, after they lose, they grab Ric Flair, and Dusty's actually is about to pull his pants down, but they drag him down the aisle, and they have a horse or a donkey uh, at the very end, by the entrance, and they rub Flair's face in the back of the donkey, and it says Dusty's ass on it. Yeah. Um, But yeah, so obviously WCW ends, and then Dusty tried to bring back like uh, an Indian Florida turnbuckle championship wrestling. He he would do like the occasional interviews, appearances here and there. He did some stuff with TNA very early on. He was actually booking TNA for a little bit uh, mm-hmm. in between Vince Russo stints he, stints. he booked TNA for about a year or two before they got TV. He would do the occasional indie shots. And then finally, in 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 the uh, in 2005, he does sign that Legends deal. And he's a creative consultant with WWE. And this is kind of the last act of Dusty Rhodes. And and I know this, but let's tie it back to the whole WrestleMania thing because finishing the story for Cody is like, yeah, I'm going to win the title that you know, nobody in my family ever could. Dustin couldn't get it. Uh, my dad couldn't, did it, couldn't get it, but I'm going to get the WWE title. And it's all about like, yeah, wrestling does have more than one royal family. You have, you know, there's no McMahons involved in WWE anymore, but there sure is a Rhodes, and he's going to main ev- win the main event of WrestleMania this year. Mm-hmm. It's, it's, that's that's the story. Well, here's here's the thing too, and maybe maybe I'm overthinking it or over overusing it, but like, and I know there's a whole story in there where Dusty and Dustin fall out, where there's a yeah, like, as father and son, they are not cool with each other. That's a whole yeah. other story that we can go Dustin, into. Dustin and Cody had very different experiences. Uh, yes. Dustin grew up when Dusty was traveling across the country. Uh, Dusty, Dustin's mom and, and Dusty broke up. 
Uh, Cody had Dusty around a lot more. Um, yeah. But but at the, by the end, Dusty and Dustin had gotten very close. Yes, but but here's where I t- when you kind of talk about Rhodes has more than one family. Um, just Wrestling. as good as a yeah, just as good as Dusty was as a baby face, and as Dusty was as a character, and Dusty was as everything. Dusty shaped a generation of wrestling. Well, that Dust, that yeah, and that's what we're kind of getting into. Dusty becomes one of if like the de facto trainer of NXT. He's not one the, of the not so much the trainer, not the not, character. Not, yeah, yeah. He's yeah. He's he's heavily involved. He's one of the main dudes at NXT where he's helping with behind the scenes and doing stuff there. Right. And a lot of today's talent that we now know that we love and respect, like your Roman Reigns and your Bailey's and your Charlotte's Charlotte, like like a lot of them like almost see dusty as a father figure. And yes. if you ask them who made them, who they are, we're, we're Rhodes kids. Like, mm-hmm. so they weren't blood, but a lot of people respect dusty because he created that next generation that we're watching today. Yeah. Dusty's big job in, in, um, in at first FCW and then NXT was he would teach promo class. Who better to have you teach learn promos than the American dream, right? He he would teach promo class. Like the in ring training was mainly done at that point by Bill DeMott, later by Matt Bloom, uh, and and Sarah Motto and oh, Regal are there now. Regal, uh, and, and a bunch of those people. They have a whole they have a whole Steve yeah, Carino's they, down there. They have a there's, there's people who coach. you don't even realize are down there that are down there. Yeah. Like like not too long ago, Lindsay popped in to help some people. You know, right. Like, like Brian Kendrick pops in and out to help people like NXT is a cool, cool place to get. You never know. It's almost like being at the worldwide dojo. Like when you're at a wrestling school like that or catch point or like those mm-hmm. schools where you're like, yeah, we're here training with cheeseburger. And then oh, delirious is here today. Like, or like, or someone from Japan came over to do a bit and they're staying at the dojo yeah. and then we get to train with them. Like it's, it's a cool spot. Like the NXT training facility. Yeah, there's there's always somebody popping in. But yeah, some of those people, especially like a Bailey, especially uh, some of the people who became writers, they they really did um, a, like that. And that is that is the the finishing of Dusty story of really just imparting that Dusty Rhodes wisdom on a whole new generation, because unfortunately uh, he, he had been sick for a little bit um, and somebody else's uh, birthday, I believe, too, or the day that somebody else died. Um mm-hmm. John Wayne. I don't know if he died on John Wayne's birthday or the same day John Wayne died. It's one or the other. But Dusty did um, toward the end. Dusty he had always had like a, a few health issues later on. I obviously was always a very large guy, but toward like the later part of his sixties, he started losing a lot of weight very quickly. And everybody would say, well, "Dusty, are you okay? What's going on?" He's like, "Yeah, my doctors are telling me that I, I should I should get in better shape. I got to take some of this weight off." It's, um, but what nobody really knows is he is uh, suffering. He, he was having kidney issues for a long time, but he would also gotten stomach cancer. I believe. Uh, I believe it was some sort of cancer he, he wound up contracting. I want I, I, I believe it was stomach cancer. Uh, and then he was getting ready to go to a. He was getting ready to go to a, a promo class, I believe and or there was and there's going to be some kind of event that night to dedicate this old building uh that was a big building for florida championship or championship wrestling from florida and a lot of like jj Dillon, a lot of these other guys are flying in for it dusty gets up on june 10th 2015 they, to go to uh promo class and he collapses um or it's the day before he collapses he goes to the hospital very quietly never told anybody how sick he was didn't want to be didn't want sympathy didn't want anybody feeling bad for him and the next day, he uh, his kidneys are failing, and he passes on uh, June tenth, twenty fifteen. And they say when people got off the plane, they thought that something happened to Pedro Morales because he was like very sick. But it's like no, it's Dusty. And that was one of the more monumental. Like, everybody knew Dusty, so he would have. Uh, it, it's kind of it's sad to put it this way, but everybody would have loved. They said Dusty would have loved how much adulation and praise and attention he got. Yeah, after he had passed, just because people people know people know there is the, the professional wrestling looks and forget the effects his children are having now uh, and the people he's taught just him as an in ring performer. Professional wrestling is so much different today without Dusty Rhodes. Yeah, it's one thing to be the legend. And this is where I kind of get some heat and I get a little angry with like things Brett may say or things that like 
Jim Cornette does and says is like, there's one thing to complain about the business. And then there's a, there's another way to give back to the business and help it grow. And, and I think Dusty's a perfect example of that. He set a tone that I think a lot of people like your Regals, like I think Regal takes it very seriously, but I think Dusty is like the for the forefront of that. And to, and, and to go back to a company to essentially make that company the where it is now, like if you look at WWE, they don't get just bought because Vince is a great businessman or Vince is a great thing. You're only as good as your talent. And that crop of talent that comes out of NXT that now becomes what we all know as WWE is because of Dusty Rhodes. So yeah, like at, on it, yeah. at the end of the day, like Dusty was mocked and picked on and made fun of and and was everything to buy a company. And in the long run, at the very end, when you say it all, there's Dusty Rhodes classics and all this, the Rhodes family won. Like Cody goes out, starts the comp, the, the, the revolution of, of what we now know as like Cody Sparks by leaving WB, goes to Japan, goes to ROH, makes uplifts the business and works with everybody and makes wrestling better. The indie scene pops off because of people like Cody Rhodes. AEW starts and the and like wrestling is what we know right now is largely because of the Rhodes name. Yeah, yeah, totally. And, and, and it's funny because we didn't really bring him up, but the, uh, in my opinion, the best, like, in between the ropes wrestler of the family was Dustin. Yeah. Yeah. Do you Dustin's think we get incredible. Dustin at Mania? Do you think they let Dusty go over? For I for don't know. It, 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 that would be incredible if they did, though. It, it would be awesome. Like, and that's, and, that, and here's the thing if, if they were able to allow that to happen, it is because the Rhodes name is that valuable. Well, no, if, if that happens because Vince isn't there anymore. Yeah, but I'm saying... It's because is, Vince but, isn't there anymore and Tony Khan let it happen. That's why it uh, happened. Well, that's be, well it, the underlining tone of that is we don't like each other as business people, but we understand what that name means to this business. And if they're going to allow it to happen, it's because of the respect of that last name and what they're what they what they brought to the business it's just it's 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 impressive and and dusty is one of those trailblazers and it's crazy how it just passed on to his kids and and to cody so when people are like cody cry babies da, 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 this that this that like there's more layers to this onion that you may not even know just because you're a rock fan you know what i mean like but oh man is the rock finding his fastball again it took a little bit but he's back it's getting a little better. He, yeah. He's back. No, it's it's good. He's back. <laughs> um, but it's 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 a time, it's a great time to be a pro wrestling fan. It's a great time for all this. Uh, whether whether Cody wins or loses, I'm sure e even if he loses, it's it's the money's in the chase, and the roads are always better when they're chasing. Like, even if I think if Cody wins the title, I don't think Cody keeps it super long. I think it's a couple months and he loses it and he chases again. I think I think that's where Cody is going to thrive as a talent. Um and 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 just as a human being, Cody embodies a lot of his dad, like helping others and and being there for others. And if you have a couple extra bucks to help somebody else out, Cody will do that. Like Preston Vance is someone we worked with and got to meet at PPW. Preston Vance lived in Cody's house and helped take care of his dog. So and, and trained the Nightmare Factory so he can trace chase his dream. Like Cody has helped so many people, and and he gets that from his dad. His dad was the same way. If he could help, he would. And uh, yeah, it just it just it, it always goes back to me to when um, Brody Lee passed and and the two people that were there when when uh, Brody's kid got the news were Biggie and Cody Rhodes. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. And it just I don't know. It's it's crazy to think that, you know, you look at where Vince is now or maybe the guy who was the catalyst for a lot of the woes of the Rhodes family. And you look at where WWE sits right now and at the end of the day they have to say thank you Rhodes for that huge yeah. TKO acquisition because without you training it, that I, next that yeah. next that next I, group of stars we're we're not as valuable as a company as you as we think we are you know what i mean i, I that's just my opinion i could be wrong but I, I think i think the people who made the dance where it is and the talent that came out of that crop made it good enough that TKO threw that big money yeah, I, I think if you're going to credit anybody for that, I think the guy that gets the most credit, besides, like, obviously, the, uh, the um, despicable as he is, Vince gets the most credit for that. Listen. Um, but Nick Khan, Nick Khan is that, Nick Khan is that guy as far but as. But listen, uh, you can't go out and sell a team to someone if you don't have a good quarterback and if you don't have yeah. a good head coach and if you don't have a good that. And Dusty was the head coach that helped make the next generation of Tom Brady's. I don't know if he was the head coach, but he, he had a, he had a definite impact. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the stories are there and they had to do promos. And oh, they had to do like, yeah, that's the no. hard, 
any a lot I'm of not really trying to talented minimize, people. I'm not, yeah, I'm not trying to a minimize lot of talented people are good at wrestling. But yeah. if you're not a good promo, it doesn't matter how fucking great in ring you are sometimes, you know? There, there were way better wrestlers than Dusty Rhodes, but there was never, ever, ever a better baby face. And there uh, probably never will be. Hey, what, what do we got here? Uh, Cody does not win the title. F you. First off, first and foremost. Take. No. I, I, who knows? Who knows? Listen, they I, got me last year. I, who knows? <laughs> you know, I, they, they got me too. And I, I, I'll, I'll die on the hill. It was a bad move. Um, uh, we could do Rock versus Roman. No problem. They would have did it last year. Yeah. But I, 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 I really, I would be very surprised if they didn't move. Well, that's very nice. Uh, <laughs> Uh, I would be very surprised that if that they didn't move heaven and earth to not have this rock Roman match. If it wasn't to coronate Cody, if, if you're just going to have Cody win it some other time or not win it at all, you just ignore the Cody chance and you just, you do rock Roman at WrestleMania and you have Cody beat Seth Rollins. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, do you see Cody's behind the scenes a, a, a role after his angry career is over 100%. I, mean, I don't. I, I also think Dustin, when he's done his bit where he's at, I think he's he's the next. Like he has a school now that he's working with and doing a lot with and and helping with. But I also see, uh, I see Dusty Dustin going back to NXT and helping out and ending his career, getting a Hall of Fame ring in the in WWE, the whole nine. Oh, Dustin, um, absolutely going the Hall of Fame. Yeah, I one hundred percent see that. Um, I want Damian Priest winning and cashing in on Cody. I agree. Honestly, I think everyone has it penciled in that Damian Priest goes after the winner of Seth Rollins and Drew McIntyre, and I think he swerves everybody and he goes after Cody. I don't know if, if you have to do it that night. Sometimes you just want a moment. Yeah. And I think... Let if, that moment happen. Maybe Raw yeah. after or... I think even that's too soon to take it the next night off Cody. Um, who knows? France. Do it in France. Do it at Backlash. You can do yeah. it... You have until Money in the Bank. Like, literally, Priest had, can do that until... When's Money in the Bank? July? Yeah. June? You have until then. There's time. I, I would... I would I, The way I would do it with Damien... I wouldn't even have Damien Priest hint he's even looking at Cody. I would have him go, like, hint he's going here, going there, and then that the night Cody is, like, at his absolute worst, boom, Judgment Day music hits. And you're like, what the... F like, I think that's a better moment than what you... Because it's, it's almost the exact opposite of what you would expect. Yeah. Yeah. And I think Damian Priest, my God, he is. If there's somebody I'm rooting for right now in the walls of WWE as someone who's going to get that push, it's it's the dude from the Monster Factory in Jersey. You know what yeah. I mean? Uh, Fondish Fondish Martinez. Martinez. Uh, great interview with uh, uh, Gabriel Hodder from, from the uh, Primal Fear. Primal Fear gives a lot of their love to Damian Priest, to helping them get to where they are and helping them learn like he's there they're like they're uh damian priest is their version of dusty Rhodes. like they helped him yeah. they helped them so much um so go check out that past interview bp before we get out of here i just want to say another thank you to our to our members on our youtube channel i already said our two grand slam champions freak maniac and raz what they get is early content that nobody else is getting right away so we're recording a vlog mania weekend it'll drop uh i'll edit it and put it up to youtube you guys get it a couple days before it airs to everybody um you'll get to all the five questions with abj as soon as i i film and edit them there there's like 15 there's like six of them up right now that you can go watch parm is getting the the super uh the super um shout with the triple crown so parm is getting that being a triple tri crown member uh anastasia also a world champ member so she's getting that love and, and getting the easy access and then we have our mid carters peter delong adam the guy uh, Kai, Ryan Fox, Danny F, Austin, Captain Butters 32, Devin the Tribal Chief, Stephen Chambers, BR, Inspector Todd, Adam, uh, Andrea, DM, and C CJ, and James M, and then our tag team champions, Lily and James K. So thank you everyone who's supporting the channel uh, with, with subscriptions over on YouTube. Uh, it means the world to us. Um, please check out next content. We will be off next Sunday. Um, we may, I may also be live next Sunday, just not with BP. Saturday night's up in the air if we're going to be able to do it or not. Uh, Sunday's most likely a lock that we will be here for WrestleMania and at least night two to see dust. Ho hopefully Cody finish that story. It'll be myself, Lily and Parm all on one camera in the same location, watching WrestleMania, enjoying ourselves. So make sure we, we will see you guys next Sunday in one aspect or another. It may not be a tornado tag, but it may be a live stream. Tons of content coming BP. Anything you want to, uh, you guys want to plug, you want to plug before you got here. 
Uh, the next thing I have going on is going to be, uh, it's going to be a little bit from now, three weeks from yesterday, I have uh, Super Show 4 PPW at the Slatington Expo Center, um, April 20th. This is going to be a big one. Uh, you just talked about Primal Fear. They are the trios champions. Adrian Soriano, Primal Fear is the PPW heavyweight champion. So I, I not quite announced what he's going to be doing uh, solo, but he might be a little busy uh, because Primal Fear and the Syndicate, Sam Adams and the Brothers Gray, they're getting their rematch at the Super Show. We're going to have a lot of fun. Uh, one of the big uh, matches I'm really looking I might get a chance to, if I have, I have a, the, the ability to sneak uh, sneak out from behind the curtain for this one. Uh, just announced this week, Griffin McCoy, the top guy, and VSK at Super Show 4. That is I a... I love you, VSK, but it's top guy time. It's top guy that, time at PPW. That's one that uh, that's what I'm really looking for. We're going to see Griff McCoy versus Jordan Oliver Again, Saturday man. in Philly. That, Fucking that, sign me up. Inject that, that, that into my veins. We're that, literally that, seeing probably five of the next generation wrestlers at that Suplex yeah. Mania show. That uh, and that McCoy, that McCoy VSK match might have been a, a suggestion for somebody. It might be a little t- close to the show. <laughs> it's, a good, it's a good book. It's a good booking. <laughs> um yeah thank you guys so much um trying to think of anything else i want to get out there before before we wrap up um nothing i can honestly think of uh check out previous content like and subscribe thank you guys all so much oh pp in two weeks do we have an idea of an episode that's what i want to talk to you about uh do you want to decompress for mania weekend and talk about everything that happened just a little more current of any stuff um so i know we talked to, so you're saying the, the fifth we do a mania like a post mania show like we have a couple of days. The, no, the fifth. I'm sorry. The twelfth. Uh, the twelfth. Yeah, that that twelfth or the fourteenth. That is. I'm looking at the days here. It's going to be a Friday. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm looking at the wrong fucking calendar. <laughs> the fourteenth. The week after Mania. The next Sunday yeah. after Mania. Yeah. So yeah, the next just, Sunday after Mania, we will do. Uh, we will do a a post Mania conversation yeah, about we could, what we thought of the show. How they tied up stories. Did they do a good job? Did they do a bad yeah, job. Everything else that happened that weekend. It's going to be a wild one. Uh, get, add Gary Hart to the list. Gary Hart would be interesting. Uh, the Samoans. We do we do that, the full bloodline story. That, how do you do that in a? You'd spend like two weeks on, or two seconds on every one the of them. Samoans will be a thing. Yeah, but we're gonna reach out to some people. We're gonna we. I'm gonna try to. Uh, Maybe it, somebody I got to call a match for last night. Who's that? Oh, I'm Lance. Certain. Yeah, Lance was in action against Sean Carr. Oh, how was that match? That was a good one. Lance is on a new level. I think that Lance is cool. Lance is banging on all cylinders right now. Lance, although uh, I was very disappointed that uh, Sean Carr was uh, firmly on team no yeet. Okay, firmly on team no yeet. Team yeet. team no yeet for sure. Until Carr. he got yeeted by Lance on Hawaii. I, I don't want to. I don't want to brag or anything, but I was in a TikTok live and I was acknowledged by Zilla. I'm just saying. Right on. Right Zilla on. came in the chat and I and they said, "Who's the best member of the bloodline?" And I said, "Lance." And Zilla went, "LOL!" Like like because not many like. If, unless you're in the know or you're in the Northeast area, Lance is not, or you're a huge MLW fan. You're like, oh, Lance, like, you know what I mean? So he he thought it was funny. I, I put Lance over. Lance has not gotten that level of recognition yet. Yet. Yet, yet. is the key word to that list. Uh, the history of ECW. That's what I want to do a lot of prep for. <laughs> yeah. That, Especially now, like just to kind of living a lot of it, just being it, growing up outside of Philly as that was going right outside of Philly as that was going on, like literally just watching it on flipping through channels on Sports Channel Philadelphia. Oh, what's this wrestling? Yeah, uh, I recently, like recently, it was like six months ago, read Todd Gordon's book, which was very interesting. Uh, yeah. His side of the story of ECW. Uh, another name, manager uh, Akbar, w- the, sca- w- the general, the general yeah. Skander Akbar, yeah. Uh, all good ones keep keep them comments coming uh if you're watching this later or you're watching you're listening to this in your car and you're screaming into your, your your speakers right now do this episode comment head over to our social media you can you can search my name anthony blackwell jr that's kind of where everything's at but uh and also huge thank you to raz for the three three dollar super sticker we made three bucks this episode we're killing it we're doing it yeah. i gotta be honest the the donations we've been getting the people joining the memberships are all it is, it is it is so oh i love this one classy Freddy blassy everybody would see once shows about managers yeah i am mean, i'm with it i'm with it everybody wants you know a what? manager show you know what what if we do an episode with a manager with a manager yeah there you go what if what if this this stream becomes maybe 
championship material for an oh, episode with a manager. There you, go, there you go. Let me let me reach out to that. He, he's one. a general manager, at least at PPW. General, general manager. Really Maybe I reach out to him and I find out what his favorite manager is. And if it falls under Classy Freddy Blassie or anything like that, Maybe oh a Sydney Bacabella episode. Oh, I, I love Sydney Bacabella. I love, <laughs> I love Sydney Bacabella. Oh, Bobby the Brain episode. I don't there's hate no, that. There's nobody else. That, that is my all-time favorite wrestling personality is Bobby the Brain. Yeah. I talked to a guy in a TikTok live. He said when he was growing up, he went to school with Bobby the Brain's niece. And oh. uh like Bobby Bobby would pick him because they lived next door to each other, and Bobby would pick him up and take him home from school. I'm like, dude, that's the coolest thing. <laughs> it, yeah, the history of ROH. We we might yeah. we might be able to have a guest on for that one. <laughs> we know a former owner uh that we might be able to do that maybe, one. Maybe he found uh, his phone by now. Yeah, yeah, hopefully he found his phone by now. Mike Tenney, he's actually scheduled today. For a Mike Tenney, Mike Tenney. Tenney. He's actually scheduled for an uh, podcast episode coming up next month. Wait, what? uh the roh guy oh okay kerry silken i i, I thought you're talking about mike today I'm like you got mike today i don't even no, think no. he's doing wrestling stuff anymore Ker Silken for a future episode um yeah so we have all that stuff out there it, it's awesome um yeah that, that's pretty much all i got well so let's let's get some let's get some uh recommendations going and uh we'll see you guys in two weeks enjoy wrestlemania everyone stay safe be on the lookout for our wrestlemania vlog i'm gonna vlog as much as i can this weekend going to the different shows if you're in the area i'll be at labor of love doing five questions with abj uh you don't have to be a wrestler to be on five questions with abj it's open to anyone so come see me uh, let's get a photo together. Let's hang out. Let's have and, a beer at Attic Brewing. And then let's let everyone enjoy Mania. Um, if you are not in the Philadelphia area, please do me a huge favor. Get See, there. <laughs> get there or actively seek, country. actively seek out how you can support those independent wrestling companies that are running that week. So whether it's going to be on the IWTV, whether it's on IWTV, premiere, Fight or the Premier Network, Thriller, 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 thriller T, like the GCW. So just go support it. Go watch it. Um, is there a show that be that you're not going to that you can't wait to come home and watch? Uh, blood and why sport, is it blood sport? <laughs> and why is it blood sport? <laughs> That's just my flavor of wrestling. I love that stuff. Um, yeah, it just it's gonna be a fun. It's just gonna be a fun time. Blood even, sport, even, even blood if you don't go to anything. Yeah, even if you don't go to anything, it's just gonna be so much great stuff going on down there. It's 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 wrestling Woodstock. Wrestle. It's gonna be, and it's in the greatest wrestling city in the world. It's, and, and I don't say that with any bias. It's the greatest wrestling city in the world. Um, it, it, it's going to be special. It's going to be a special, special time. Yeah. Uh, I think, but I think the big thing, uh, the big thing this show that surprised me, except the over under for the Dusty Impressions at six and a half. We're at six. The under wins. Under oh, wins. Did it, baby. Oh, did it, baby. Oh, did it, baby. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun, man. Uh, Joshi Mania weekend. Uh, it's There's a lot of Joshi matches. If you're a Stardom fan, there's a lot going on that weekend, too. Yeah. Yeah. This Stardom's is, this... having a show at the, uh, the, the arena. I'm going to, the 2300. Yeah. Where... Willow's, Willow's working a Stardom yeah. show. There's, R, there's, uh, there's Stardom talent wrestling on ROH's show. Like, it's, it's Zaya cool, going to be on that show. She was very, very, uh, very much a pleasure to work with. It's going to be awesome. Uh, a little maybe teaser. They couldn't say anything in their in their live stream on TikTok, but I asked Polo Damar when they were live on uh, TikTok. I said, "What what what are you most excited for this Mania weekend besides Effie's?" Or I said, "But and why is it Effie?" And they said, "There's a match that hasn't been announced yet that's going to happen at Effie's show that they are very excited about." Oh. And I'm like, "So there's an undisclosed match possibly. I don't. I'm not breaking anything, but this is just what I heard on TikTok live. So there might be something happening on." Uh, on Effie's match, uh, Effie's uh, gay brunch that in Philly that has not been announced yet. So something keep an eye on. So many great shows. Go support independent wrestling. Enjoy WrestleMania. We will try our absolute best to be here for night for night one. If we're not, we're definitely be here night two. We love you so much. Support wrestling. Support independent wrestling. Don't be toxic. Like it all. There's no reason for tribalism. Everything is good. Just enjoy pro wrestling. It's the best time to be alive, baby. Let's do it. That's we'll see eight. you next time. Jeez.
Anyway, thanks for watching this presentation. Like, share, and subscribe for more.